Hello, Facebook and YouTube and the podcast world, wherever you are listening. I am the Jason Lavelle, and you are watching or listening to Spilling Ink. Tonight, we have some very special guests. We have the beautiful, talented, and very creepy Kendra Souter and her, hus and her husband, Ed. How's it going over there, guys? <laughs> it's okay. It's going okay. fantastic. We're on another podcast, <laughs> second one for me this week. We got me, Jason LaVelle. We got all kinds of stuff playing for you guys. Hopefully, you have fun. Oh, good, good. And then we have the lovely Miss Jane out on the East Coast. Jane, how are you? I'm good. And, and you know, it was almost 50 degrees today, so I'm kind of happy. <laughs> oh, that's a good day. And you look beautiful. I love that blue top. Thank you. That's nice. You. I'm I'm jealous. I, I need to, to liven up my wardrobe. It seems like all I have is gray lately. It's really comfortable, too. So. Yeah. <laughs> then far out to the west in the land of sin and warm weather and dust, Miss Katie Salidas. That's right. That's right. It was a beautiful 60 degrees today. Oh, Bright and God. sunny. Glorious day. <laughs> that sounds amazing. <laughs> This time you came out here, so you got to experience some of our, our glorious late winter, early spring weather. Yeah, it it truly is beautiful out west. I mean, I'm I'm super jealous. No, Ed and Kendra or, or Kendra and Ed. Sorry, Kendra, I didn't mean to put his name before yours. It's just, it's written down there, Ed and Kendra. I don't know who who wrote that. Oh, Ed, Ed, Ed. <laughs> where where are you guys? Where do you guys live? It's farmer of South Carolina. Okay, so it's it's decent weather there, isn't it? Yeah, I got up to 52, 53 today, but it didn't feel like it. My phone said forty three, and it was raining. We were raining today too, and it was like 38, which is not, uh, that's not very nice. You know, we're going to be 70 come Monday, so I'm looking forward to that. <sighs> oh, oh so jealous. Told me. <laughs> so jealous. So today on the show, um, from what I understand from our, our pregame conversation, we're talking about sexy horror novels and why we love them so much. And that's actually why we have Kendra on today, because she is an expert at sexy horror novels, right? I wouldn't say expert, but I think you believe I might be an expert. <laughs> I don't know how humble she is. She's, she's know, like, yeah, I do think so. It's all good. But yeah. it comes oh, from you, you are. <laughs> it comes from my self-esteem issues. She's like, okay. oh, well, I just signed my 15th movie and television deal. But, you know, it's no big deal. <laughs> Nobody pays attention. <laughs> Wish. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> well, in case everyone out there has been living under a rock, can you guys tell us a little bit about what you do? As I don't know, it's so weird having you on the same screen here. It's like you're the same person. We're not the same person. God knows. <laughs> I would bet on you, please. <laughs> what are you doing? Wait, wait. There, there we go. I'll move places. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, that, that was <laughs> that was great. You can do that while you introduce yourself, and then black out the other side while Kendra goes. <laughs> All right, Ed. Ed, tell us about you. Uh, okay, I'm the executive flunky that runs Burning Willow Press, and um, pretty much like Rebecca Jonasy says all the time, just get back chained to your desk and just stay there. Don't talk. So. That's about all I really do. I'm not much of an author. I put something out once in a while, but most of the time I'm just running the company. I haven't read anything of yours. What What do you write, Ed? Uh, well, I got so I got a submission that was accepted through channels in Southern Fight Autopsies, and then uh, a couple months later, I got really nervous when I wrote a short story for one of our own anthologies, Crossroads in the Dark Four Ghosts. And sent it through everybody, and everybody loved it. So I went ahead and got it edited and put it in there. And that's the only thing I've really done in the last couple of years. Most of my stuff is in production. Okay, very cool. So you write stuff more in the, the scary vein, too? Yeah, I'm multifaceted. Okay. Science fiction, war, fantasy, um, a mixture. I even do romance from time to time. Okay, cool. Well, Kendra? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tell, tell us about the Kendra Souter. The I got a B too. Uh, 
Yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I am an author of anything speculative fiction that includes fantasy, sci-fi, horror, or any of the subgenres therein. Um, especially sexy horror. Um, <laughs> and I'm also. <laughs> Um, I'm also one of the co-founders of Burning Willow Press, and that's it. Okay, I've written like three quarters of one episode for the show, and that's it. <laughs> I've done two editing. covers. Okay, I've edited a few. And I'm getting my master's degree. There we go. I'm done. <laughs> how supportive you are, Ed, and she's just like, "Yeah, you're right." <laughs> Not to mention, she does all this with a day job that takes her out of the house for ten hours a night. So, when do you sleep? Hardly ever. Yeah. Okay, that sounds about right. I made up for it over the weekend. That that, <laughs> that actually sounds very yeah. accurate. Yeah, I, I can totally understand that. I, I kind of do the same thing, doing the whole work at home with the kids still there. So yeah, the sleep happens when you can get to it, right? Pretty much, yeah. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> we're all when we're dead, right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. And I have a recliner, so it makes it easier. I don't even have to leave the living room. See, yeah, she's got the Blu-ray remote that's got Hulu and Netflix and YouTube and everything on it. Oh, yeah. And she's got the TV remote. And she's got a place over here for her coffee. And she's got a place over here for snacks. And she reclines, laptop and cat. She's good to go. That's it. Now, now let me ask you a serious question here. All right. Because the, the creative mind is always running, right? Mm -hmm. So when it's time for you to shut down and fall asleep, do you have to have white noise or TV on or something to fall asleep? TV. Okay. <laughs> I have this argument with my husband because I have to have something to distract me from what I'm thinking about to fall asleep. So I have to have a TV on and he has to have dead silence and it just doesn't work. Let's see what happens for me is usually we'll turn on something and then I get so interested in it. I stay awake for like those three episodes that Netflix plays before it asks if you're still watching. And then maybe I can fall asleep, but it gets too quiet after that. So sometimes I have to turn it back on and then I still don't sleep. Hey, I figured out <laughs> that I really do like the office on that. So you just keep doing it. I, I do reruns. It's got to be something I've seen before. So that way I'm not doing that whole watch three episodes before I fall asleep thing. That's how I've seen Friends one too many times. That's I don't how we think get Friends, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Angel, Supernatural, all of it. Moonlight's a good one. Moonlight, even though it only ran Moonlight. one. Season. That was excellent. I haven't seen that one yet. See, my go-to is Brooklyn Nine-Nine right now. That's, yeah. I've, I've seen them all, but it's always good for a laugh, and then I can just kind of drift away <laughs> with the help of my Ambien and my fan. Sometimes what helps me, though, too, is hearing Gordon Ramsay curse at people. That helps. <laughs> Oh. So I can turn on like Hell's Kitchen or you know um, what's this new one, Twenty Four Hours Hell and Back or something like that. It it's really helpful to like hear his his voice and him yelling at people. I don't know why. I just want him to call me a fucking donut. <laughs> I'm gonna do I want a fucking donut. I'd be like, yes, I am. Thank you. Uh, have you seen the uh, the ads that have been popping up on Facebook for Rage Yoga? I, I feel yes. like that's something that we could all benefit from. No, tell me what this is. Rage yoga. Well, apparently it's yoga where you you scream and swear and drink beer while you're doing yoga to release all the negative energy and stuff. It sounds amazing. Where do I sign up for this class? <laughs> right, right. And I do it from home. <laughs> I'm always swearing, and I'm always well, not always drinking, and I don't. I think I can do yoga, but I can certainly try. I have been to a yoga class, and it was actually really cool. I I, I really enjoyed the yoga class. And unfortunately, I, my core is not very strong, so I, I I didn't make a very good showing of my, for myself. But I, I thought it was really uh, enjoyable, actually. Yeah. I'm with Anita yeah. on supernatural. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I, I need, you are you and Anita with the supernatural. Yep. <laughs> I cannot get into that show. I don't no. know what's wrong with you. You're still seeing them from when they were when they were really young. You know, like when Jensen Ackles used to be on that suit that uh <gasps> 
soap Come opera. On. All <laughs> things. Soap opera. I got it. When he used to be on that soap opera and then Jared Padda left when he was on Gilmore Girls. I still saw that too when I first started. I actually got into Gilmore <laughs> Girls because of Netflix. We watched it to her and get background noise. And I was like, these girls are hot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you see something in them. There's Jared Padda like you go, Moose. <laughs> Uh, I think I watched uh, four or five episodes of Supernatural, and I just I couldn't do anymore. It was just yeah, it's little, much better after the second season. It just, I tried. That, I the, the second season, and I couldn't get into it either. Everyone, everyone says that, but I'm like, so I have to watch two full seasons of this crap in order to <laughs> start. It's better getting, as well. it's really <laughs> Thanks for Thank you, Anita. <laughs> <laughs> that's like getting through the first harry potter book so that you can start enjoying harry potter that first book was that was rough i'm gonna tell you what like i've ever read the first harry potter book no, no well it's it's better if you don't it's like christopher columbus actually wrote that after he made the movie Ugh. i'm sure jk rowling is going who is this thug jason <laughs> <laughs> you are going to have your the removed, Jason. Yes. And J.K. Rowling is going to take it from you. <laughs> and, and I and I love Harry Potter. I do. That first one, it was just so, it was so first grader book. I don't know. I just, I liked it when people started dying. <laughs> they started getting yeah. really dark and sad. Yeah, it makes it better. When it got, that's, right. oh, that's when it got into Jason's, you know. Okay, I, I got you. That's yeah. right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you like the blood and gore, so let's kill everybody. That's right. That's how it should be, isn't it? Right. Man, well, like the movie Three Hundred, perfect movie, great movie. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like we died in hell. Okay, let's go. I mean, there was even a little sex. I mean, just a teeny bit. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. <laughs> you have to make that my catchphrase now when my husband leaves for work. Come back with your shield or on it. Mm. <laughs> yep. Well, and then did you have you seen the um the the second 300 that came out the uh, 300 that was horrible. Well, I'll tell you what. The movie wasn't that great, but the sex scene between what's her name, Ava Green and the the main Spartan guy. Oh yeah, that was great. Oh, freaking hot. Holy crap. Wow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That, that, was, that, was, that was worth watching. So yeah. you had to get into the movie and through all the bullshit to get to that. And then after that, you're like, really? What? You're, back in the, you're back in the bullshit. Yeah. yeah. Now, have you have you guys watched uh, Penny Dreadful? Yes. Some of it, yes. Some of it, yes. yes. Oh, man. I, I really, I really enjoyed that show. And I don't even remember what, what channel it was on now, but I just really enjoyed it. How's it going, Justin? Do you watch Penny Dreadful too, Justin? Cause that was cool. Anyway, I just, I just really love Eva Green. So that seems like that would be a show that's right up your alley. The, the Penny yeah. Dreadfuls were pretty good. I, I haven't watched the whole thing yet. I should catch back up because they well, were very interesting. How they twisted the the old tales into yeah um, it, that, that it, flowing plot line. The first episode where they introduced Dorian Gray was really interesting. At least I think that was the first episode. I've always but been he a was, fan of Dorian. It was Gray. really cool, and I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to watch more of this, and then just haven't yet. So I've only seen the first episode. Yeah. Well, and and I, I watched it to completion, and I, I won't I won't talk about the end uh, the end at all. But yeah, I I was I was a huge fan of the show, and and I'm I'm bummed that it ended the way ended the way it did because it meant that the show was not going to continue ever again. <laughs> um, but you know, it, it was a it was a really cool show. So if you haven't watched it, man, that's yeah, that's good dark stuff. Very good stuff. We all end up going to bed. She'll turn on something that we're in the middle of, and I'm and she'll be exhausted. And I'll be like, Why don't you put on something that since I'm not tired, why don't we put on something that I might want to watch? Since you're gonna be over here snoring in my ear anyway. And it's like, oh no, I'll stay awake for it. She'll hit it and she'll <laughs> I don't look like that, by the way. <laughs> she doesn't. So, so Ed, what, what kind of shows are you trying to watch? Well, I like to watch scientific stuff too. Right now, I managed to get him into Firefly, which I've always yeah. been a big fan of. And Excellent. so he finally started. I finally well, I mean, started I've seen a few episodes of it over the years, but I didn't, you know, have the time when it was airing in prime time to just sit down and watch it because I had a young, young first wife and child, and I had a job that I had to be at. So I come home and I'd be like, news, bed. And that's about it. Get up before, do it again. Or I was always out of town, so it didn't matter. 
but I never really got the opportunity to watch it when it was first airing. And now I have something called Hulu. So mm. it's cool. I can sit back and just watch it all. Yep. <laughs> Game changers, <laughs> streaming, streaming revolutionized how we how we consume things. Yeah, it made me gain about twenty or thirty more pounds. Yeah, <laughs> but you know what? It also changed the way consumers look at books now too, where we have to more mass produce our books rather mm -hmm. than people having the patience to wait a year for the next book in the sequel or the next book in the series. Whereas that used to be the norm. Now they expect you know two to three books a year, or they lose interest. <laughs> Well, you, you say that you say that katie it's true Only, well it's true for us little guys it's not true for the big guys because the big guys my my favorite big guys i'm still waiting for that new book every single year and uh don't worry larry dean i am going to finish this statement and i'm gonna take it to completion uh, <laughs> So you understand. I actually kind of forgot what I was saying, but no. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. So a, a lot of my, a lot of my, my big five authors that I really enjoy, I'll, I'll pre-order the next book if I'm hooked on a series and the, the release date is always next year. You know, you're always waiting for that, that ebook to come in. Whereas with the indie guys, like you said, we've got to be pushing out books a lot faster than that. And so I, it, I don't think it's everybody. I, I, think, I just think it's us. I just think it's the indies that have to do that because we don't have this, this mass publishing or mass marketing machine behind us pushing us forward. I see it depends because sometimes if I know a book series is going to continue, I'll wait until the series is done. What? And then get the books so that I, I can read them all. Oh, Katie. It's that, that Netflix generation where I'm so used to being able to binge watch, I want to binge read too. Binge read, yeah. I don't have time for that. No, I, 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 yeah, I don't have time for that either. I, I really you got don't. Feeling me with that. I'm a publisher over here. Don't tell my authors that they can put their books out back to back like that. You're going to kill me. <laughs> well, you're married to the, the to the biggest offender, aren't you? Uh huh. <laughs> I am not that bad. <laughs> Fifteen books a year, yeah, I know. No, so I slowed down quite a bit. Only because you're writing the next twenty-five. No, I slowed down because I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah, it is exhaustion. Yeah. That I believe. That yeah. I absolutely believe. Because well, it's, it's, it's not just writing, though. It's it's everything else that goes into it that drains you. She was on um, Arm and Tooks when they were still a thing. Armand Rosmelia and Mark Tufo when they did Arm and Tooth. She was on their podcast, and um, they were saying something about works in progress. And I walked behind her, and I just said, 217 kept going. And they thought I said 17, and they were giving each other hell about bringing her on there, making them look bad. I go, no, guys, no. 217 in her whip. And they go, Armand goes, Mark, you asshole. You don't bring people on here to make me look bad. What's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, let's look at time. it now. Okay, uh, for the four of us that are all here, actually five, including Ed, how many books do you have in the works right now? Who goes first? Jane. Jane goes first. Jane, be quiet. One. one right now. What? Okay. I only have one right now. So what's on your schedule? For this year? That I'm going. <laughs> but, but, but what's on your I schedule? Have, I have like 43 that I have, you know, mapped out. <laughs> Kendra, what about you? Um, let's see. Be honest. I'm gonna try. Okay. <laughs> um, we'll come back for her. <laughs> you don't have to do that. Okay. There, I'm working on two of my own and one collaboration with Brian. Okay. okay, that's pretty reasonable. Okay. See, I've got. Yeah, I've, I've got a lot. Stop it. Well, and I'm I'm working on I've got what I've got I've got two novels, and then I've got I think I've got three novellas that probably should turn into novels, but I'm not I've I've kind of put down those projects to to work on the other ones and a short story that I'm I'm working on right now. So I, I have more than usual on my plate. Usually I'm a one book a year, one book at a time guy. And then Katie, you're you're doing how many right now? Because you're you're working on the next three for your series, right? 
Yeah, I've got for this year, I've got the next three in the asset series that I plan to have done. And then James (laughs) just sent me a a huge teaser for the collaboration that we're doing, which is a three book series. So that's another three that are supposed to be done before the end of the year so they can be put out next year. Yes. Yeah, that's six books for this year. Yep. Yeah. Now, and Kendra, if you ever want to collaborate on sexy horror, I, I'm in. I'll write the, the horror part. You write the sexy part. We can do this. All right. Yeah. We, we got this. We got this. <laughs> for sexy horror is awesome, though. <laughs> I'm actually working on three or four myself, but I can't tell you when they're coming out because I what? want to come to. Why not? Well, because I don't know when I'll actually have time to get back to them. I'm always editing somebody else's work. Oh, man. That sounds like a, a tough life. <laughs> it can be. <laughs> <laughs> Some serious feedback. I, I, Joe, are you talking about the the weird squeakiness? Or are you yeah, talking about I'm hearing, hearing it too. <laughs> I'm hearing it too. Is it? Yeah. So I don't know if it's Jason. He, he put himself on mute. So. Yeah, and I'm still hearing it too. I wonder where it's coming from. Hmm. Anita, are you coming on our show soon? Why did I, do I, do, is Anita coming on our show? I don't think I have her on the schedule, but we should. Really? She was recently on, not too long ago. Man. That must have been when Jason was off doing something in another world somewhere. It could be. <laughs> well, we had Andy Peliquin on. Uh, yeah, he was on there with uh, Josh Robertson. Yeah, and apparently I've been on a show with him before, but I thought that I was just meeting him for the first time. So anything could be happening. I wouldn't know. <laughs> sure you've been on with him before probably on go indie now i want to say it could be i don't know though shows but the last time i did a panel with joe there was a lot of people it was really tough to keep track of all those little boxes at the bottom (laughs) and plus i only pay attention to myself so (laughs) there is no radio broadcast going on joe i don't know what's happening guys and our house is completely quiet. So. Yeah, ours ours too, except for a couple dogs barking upstairs. Maybe we're picking up alien transmissions. Oh, yeah. That could be cool. I'll have to tell Brian <laughs> later because we're writing aliens. <laughs> Oh, see, there we go. Oh. Right. See, Jason was the way I was right. Yep. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me. Doesn't surprise me. I'll be. <laughs> Oh, so are any of you doing something cool for spring break? What's spring break? I don't know what that is anymore. (laughs) No. My my son is going to Florida. That's cool. See, her son's doing something fun. (laughs) That's right. I I think the the older we get, the the less spring break stuff we get to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sad. All right, Katie, I kind of got off track there with the spring break thing. What's going on, what's going on in the world? Well, we're going out there. Again. How did we end up talking about spring break? We were talking about book releases and series and all that. How did we get to spring break? I, I blame know. you, Jason. You're always derailing us. It really is. <laughs> 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 we're going to <laughs> Oh, oh, Ed, do you know any publishers that um, publish short stories that are more uh, kind of literary fiction type stuff? I could probably do a search for you and find a couple if I just ask a couple of my friends. That'd be awesome if you wouldn't mind. I've got, I've got something. I've got a I've got a piece that I want to find a home for, but I'm having a tough time finding a home for. Yeah. 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 I've done that in the past. I've found a home for a couple of books here and there. A couple of short stories, a couple of poems, a couple of things in the past. So I'll look around for you. Okay. Awesome. Very cool. So not, all... not horror or, or sci-fi, Jason? No, no, nothing. Nothing. It's a right horror. It's its first te- attempt at it. He's doing sexy horror too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, wait a second. <laughs> The one and only Katie Salidas. The one and only. I like oh, it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Katie, you're going to have to update your name there. There we go. <laughs> I, I like that. Be in Kendra 
<laughs> can you start in the flunky? Yeah, that would work. <laughs> now we are having Joe come on for drinks with authors this month. Oh, cool. I have to yeah. do that now because Joe, Joe and I are, are buddies. I like him a lot. So I might have to do that with you guys. You come crash that show with us. Uh yeah, I'll bring a bottle of something. <laughs> Oh yeah, yes. come on, Ed. Normally, normally we do. The last couple of times I bagged out on that, but <laughs> I know you with your water the last time. Come on. At least I drink energy drinks while I'm on here. <laughs> well, it, it, it's it's five o'clock your time. If I drank if I drank that now at eight o'clock my time, I would not go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> you know what the bad thing yeah, is? I've been awesome. energy drinks for so long that I could probably go to sleep right afterwards. It's it's horrible, absolutely horrible habit. That's, that's I only drink one a day, and I don't drink coffee. So <gasps> this drink is the natural state of being. If I had coffee, it would be nightmarish. <laughs> it's cringed a little on the inside. We can't be oh. friends, Jay. Hey, Mickey. <laughs> <laughs> I drink about a pot and a half of coffee every day before lunch. Well, that's, that's my husband. He's he's a coffee. He drinks enough for the two of us. So right, and I'm drinking it at six o'clock when she gets home from work. I'm still drinking coffee, and she's like, "You're gonna be up all night." I'll go in there and sit down on the couch and sleep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After a while, you lose the effect of coffee. It, it does help wake you up, but it doesn't keep you up any longer. It keeps me from going on an insane rampage against people. It we appreciate coffee. that. The, I get that. I get that. I'm very armed. I'm very armed. It saves lives. So, <laughs> <laughs> so we, I was joking around about sexy horror a little bit ago, but you should probably tell people why. Kendra, can you tell us a little bit about your Miss Hyde novellas? Um, the Miss Hyde novellas is a is an erotic horror series, um, or as one person called it one time, horror erotica. I've never I like heard that. that before, but I'm like, that. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And I actually use it already, but after they said it. Anyways, um, <laughs> it's um, my modern take on Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, and the main character is a woman. Um, There's no elixir. No elixir. No, I, I trashed that out. It's like, you know what? Pretty much any other retelling is going to have that same, you know, plot kind of thing and to me that would if i was going to make it more modern i think i thought it needed to go so i was like you know no elixir it's just going to be a weird weird thing anomaly and well, tell, yeah. tell, tell, us, tell us a little bit about her what kind of uh what kind of trouble does she get into Oh, she gets into a lot of trouble, but I don't want to spoil too much. Um, there is a big reveal for our big bad in the end of number five. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, but she gets she gets herself into a little bit of trouble. Um, she goes out with her friend Lauren to bars every night because you know she's she's young, she's late twenties, she wants to go out and have fun, but she's got this alter ego that doesn't always allow that to happen for too long. Um, Especially she, when she gets a guy into bed. Yeah. She gets what she wants. <laughs> she gets what she wants. And then, she the wants. Rest, okay. then the rest is, yeah. They both get what they want in the end. So. <laughs> That's awesome. They both, both her and the guy or her and the alter ego? Her and the alter ego. <laughs> the guy, not so much. He, you know, he gets what he wants too. It's just not how he wants the happy ending the happy way in. <laughs> <laughs> no, most guys think one night stand. Yeah, even in the morning, no walk of shame here. They don't walk out. <laughs> well, you don't have to worry about that walk of shame if you if you can't walk. I don't have a walk of shame. You just walk out. Yeah, because because she's the hot one, they have to walk of shame because they're leaving her apartment. Okay, not leaving her apartment, but they would. Be. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so okay. There's two guys on this panel and three women. Okay, so this is going to sound really chauvinistic, but guys don't have a walk of shame. When they walk out of a hot girl's apartment, they're like, that's right. Uh-huh. Yeah. Who, you the doorman? Guess what? I just did. That's the way we are. We don't care about the oh, I'm so embarrassed I had a one-night stand. That doesn't happen that way. For guys. That's, that's, that's actually very true. <laughs> Hate the bust the bubble, but single men don't have a walk of shame. Let us live in our fantasy world, right? 
We are always ashamed, Kendra. Always. Very, yes, very we are always ashamed. ashamed of everything we do, every mistake we make. We have regrets up to our eyeballs, which is probably That's right. But we all, we, all we want to do <laughs> is improve. Well, yeah, that we need to do. All of us need to improve. Oh. Oh, we just didn't so. let you guys ramble on this whole time. It's just yeah, I'm just like, let them go. <laughs> Sometimes that's for the best. <laughs> uh, so are you working on anything with uh, Cirillo lately? Um, he is actually, he's he's handling more of the beginning stages of book two of the Zombified series. Um, because that book started off from a screenplay that he had written. Um, so he's kind of taking the reins on actually fleshing out what the outline of the next book, and then me and him will collaborate on the meat or the rest of it. So um, he said that he's going to have an outline to me by spring. Oh, that's coming up. <laughs> but uh, no, he said that he's going to have an outline to me by the springtime. So hopefully we'll have something going there soon as well, too. So with with all the stuff that you work on, with all the different projects you have floating around, how do you pick and choose what you're going to work on every single day? Um, <laughs> uh, it's whichever one calls to me first. Um, right now, since I'm not really working on a lot of things all at once, it's made it a little bit easier. Um, I have an Ashes of Heaven series that I'm actually working on that usually calls to me the loudest because it's the most controversial and the one I've been wanting to work on for the longest time. Um, so I'll usually right now, most of the time, go back and forth between the new Miss Hyde and that. And then, um, me and Brian kind of work on our thing in the interim in between. So, well, and I, I have a question for you. And it, it, this one's actually a serious question, which is, uh, weird for me. Um, because, <laughs> right, right? I know it. Um, but you, you produce a lot of content and I'm not talking just about the books that you release, which you release a lot of, but you're also posting lots of cool promo pictures that I know have been put together in Photoshop or GIMP or whatever program you're using, you're writing personal updates on Facebook and you're also writing business updates on Facebook. If, if you're, if you're working full time, how do you structure your time so that you're able to get those things done? Do you have a, a do you have a set schedule in your day where before work I'm doing this or after work I'm doing this, or is it kind of whenever you can squeeze things in, you're making it happen? Um, sometimes I'll get to post things in the morning um, right before I have to walk into work. It's not all the time. Um, usually, though, I do have certain breaks that I ha that I have to take that they make us take at my day job. So I'll just usually do more during those times. So I have a 15 minute break in the morning and then I'll have my hour lunch at round noon and then another 15 minute break before I leave at five. So it helps me squeeze that in there. So you're, you're squeezing it in during your lunch break and during your, okay. All yeah. right. You're going all the time. Do you guys have kids? Not yet. Not yet. You got four legged ones. Okay. Okay. Well, I was, I was just going to say, how, how are you doing this with, <laughs> This is this just madness. Um, no, no, that that's amazing though, and and I and I always really enjoy the content that you put out. Now, is it okay for me to ask you about some of the personal content that you've put up on Facebook? Sure. Okay, because you you've talked a lot over this last year about uh, about your illness and and living with it and and trying to get through it. Is that Bichette's? Is that mm -hmm. what's going on? And yes. I, um, Bichette's disease, it's a rare autoimmune, auto-inflammatory disease. It's um, basically where normally your immune system attacks foreign invaders, you know, like viruses, bacteria, things like that. Uh, mine decided that it's going to go AWOL and attack my own body tissues, healthy or not. Um, for In this case, it's the blood vessel. So it's a type of autoimmune kind of like vasculitis type deal. Okay. Okay. Because just, and I, and I really had no knowledge of it but it, it sounded very lupus like when you were posting about it but um yeah that sounds really unpleasant are you are you making progress with with managing it or yeah um she had me on one treatment for a while that was working really well until recently and then it was a few weeks ago she changed me to a new one that's, a, that's yeah, an I'll immunosuppressant so. instead of something that's more of an anti-inflammatory. Now it's an immunosuppressant, and that seems to actually be doing a lot better than what she had me on before. So, 
We're getting there. And, and I have a friend here uh, locally that, um, and I don't, I, I feel bad, I don't remember the name of her autoimmune disorder, but um, she was treating for the, the longest time just using cannabis. And I know that worked, worked for her for a number of years. And then all of a sudden it was like, it just, it just turned off and, and all of a sudden it, it didn't work at all. And I'm like, well, how does that happen? Because like, they, they don't know how it happens. Yeah. They don't have tolerance to any medication up for time. Well, no matter what it is. Even my rheumatologist explained it to me this way. You know, you can take anything, you know, even if it's, you know, FDA approved treatments, experimental, and then work. And then all of a sudden, them either stop or they don't work 100% all the time. Um, the previous treatment that she had me on, it worked most of the time. I would still have the odd flare up every now and then. And then I had this last really bad flare back in February where I was in a lot of pain. I had to leave work and I came home. And so she switched my medication and it pretty much pulled me out of that one within a couple of days. So it's better. It's a lot better managed than it was, let's say six months ago. Okay. Wow. Well, I've, I, I am, I am so <laughs> thankful that I, that I don't have to, to do that. And I, I, I hope that you continue to find success with with managing it, because man, what it just sounds like it's really unpleasant. It is. It is. Um, it's a lot to work through. You have to have a lot of willpower. Um, that's really I don't have willpower I at all. You don't have willpower. <laughs> I don't. Oh, I mean, it's willpower. <laughs> that's right. I have pizza power. I, I have the power of eating pizza. I mean, you have to have, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. You have to have that willpower to keep going when you have to, but you also have to know what your limits are and know when to say enough is enough and you have to stop for a little while. Um, so that's what's slowed me down quite a bit with the writing and all that stuff and all of the conventions and stuff that we were doing. It was just getting to be too much. So I haven't really done a lot in the last year, but I'm getting back up there. <laughs> Well, I'm curious about so I was recently talking with uh with an author on my my other podcast and she had gone through some really serious um health problems and she had to have multiple surgeries and it was just a, a really terrible period of her life and um she was writing during this period and so I was asking her um how those external events were affecting her writing um so I wanted to ask you the the same thing do you find that you know, the, the condition of your body and, and your mental health, do you find that that affects your, your writing quality or quantity? Quantity for sure. Um, I'm usually very, very, very tired and this, it causes extreme fatigue. Um, so a lot of the time I just want to lay down and not do anything. Like sometimes I'll come home, maybe we'll cook dinner, he'll cook dinner. I'll eat and then I'll lay back in the recliner because I don't feel like doing anything because you're just that tired. And mentally that does wear on you because um, you want to be able to do the things that you were doing before and you just can't, you have to know what, like I said before, you have to know what your limits are and when to stop. And right now I'm in kind of stop and go mode, but I'm picking up a little bit more since this new thing's working. Okay. Okay. I just want to say hi to my my daughter who just popped up on the comments there. Hello, Emma. She is my uh, my uh, my little girl, and they're actually uh, out of town right now visiting some uh, family, so she, she must be on a computer somewhere. Uh, but yeah, so, so sorry, we, we we got we got a little bit heavier there, guys. I I apologize. I just I've been I've been so wanting to ask you about that, but I was like, oh, I don't know if I should send you a message. It's so personal. I'll wait until you're on the show live, and then I'll just ask you live. And come over. I, that'll, that'll work out well, right? Because that's um, how you deal with personal questions. You just broadcast them across the internet, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I'm I'm very public about it. I mean, it's a very rare thing in the United States. I want to say one in two hundred thousand. So. My rheumatologist has been doing this for 30 years and me and one other patient are all that she has, um, which lupus and rheumatoid arthritis and things like that are more common. So as far as awareness goes, I'm very open about it. So I, if you want to ask me more questions, I'm open. <laughs> and that's just one more thing that makes you special, right? You're yeah. one in 200,000. That's pretty good. Absolutely. <laughs> but also, think of how tough you 
be able to continue writing and creating while dealing with this because a lot of these autoimmune diseases, you know, people may look healthy and look normal, but they are struggling inside. And, and to be able to just make it through the day is hard enough, but to continue and to push through and work and create, that's, that's beyond hard. That's Katie, we, we try to keep this light on the show, Katie. What, what are you doing over there? <laughs> what, what, what the hell? What is I know, I know. It's, it's all my fault. Oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, I hear you. That D is about to be wiped off your name there, Jason and Katie. I, I know. <laughs> Jason. But then you'd be like, share Madonna. <laughs> It'll just be a J soon. No, no you can't you can't be just a J. I'm a J. That's <laughs> Jane. You can't take that from her. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness oh. <laughs> you ladies are killing me and ed you're just being such a good sport you're so supportive and wonderful i yeah. just my mouth shut <laughs> oh, i do i do have a bone to pick with you though uh -oh. because i thought you looked like the guy in the picture that keeps Getting advertised as a powder? That picture is That's so 10 old. years oh old. God, and, <laughs> since I lost my leg five years ago, I have gained 60 pounds. Well, all, all I'm saying is that you need to. Sorry, I, I'm on a I'm on a Mac, so whenever I get a message on my phone, it pops up in the middle of the the screen, and somebody just told me I needed to join an escape room. I'm like, what? <laughs> I don't even know who that is. <laughs> oh, so anyhow, I, I really feel like that I feel like you should um, update that photo for us because I had no idea who I was looking at. I, I was really confused. <laughs> yes. Also, Ed, now that you've now that you've broached the subject. Tell us about how you lost your leg. Mm. Well, he's just going for the throat here. Just all the <laughs> yeah, I just, I want to know. Okay. Make up something good there, though. There's an issue with how I lost my leg. Okay. Um, you it, saved somebody. It involved a lawsuit, and I'm not allowed to really discuss it in the public forum. Oh, hi, Santiago. Hello, right there. Hi, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's good to see you, buddy. It's good to meet you. Um, so, Ed, as, what we were talking about is, were you were you actually going to show us your prosthesis? Well, I can't say that word. Prosthesis. I'll be very happy to see this one. Yes. Oh, Ooh. that's cool. Oh, that's awesome. That nice. Sweet. I'm gonna. That's for you, brother. He's got uh, a million. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that leg. I'll give you five bucks for that leg right now. Uh, <laughs> add about eighty thousand dollars and you can have it. I'll go get me another one. <laughs> well, I'm just gonna assume, since you can't talk about it, that there was a helicopter crash and you actually dove in to rescue a woman that was in the back. It was Kendra. And as you were doing that, the rotors snapped off and came down on, on your leg. And story. We'll go with that. Yeah. My original story is not bad, but um, uh, yeah, I, I like that one. Could I, hey, could I be like um, coming down out of it like uh, Schwarzenegger and Commando or something? Hell yeah, you can. Hell yeah, can I have that body too? Because that'd be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Jason's, maybe Jason's taking body. That'd be better. I prefer that one. Yeah, because <laughs> Schwarzenegger, while he was he was you know really big and buff, I just don't see how he can move with all those muscles bouncing off of his head and everything else. I mean, <laughs> you know what? It's it's funny is that my high school physical science teacher, this is how much of an impression that made on me, used, because I, I was obsessed with Arnold back in, back in the day, and he yes, always yeah. used to make fun of him because he was a baseball player, and he was like, those guys can't even throw a ball because their arm will get stuck right there. And I was like, come on, I, I man. Used make, I used to make a joke like that, too, about Arnold. Like, Maria, I can't fit through the door. Sideways. <laughs> oh, thank you. You know? <laughs> Uh, Arnold's probably a fantastic guy. I've never had the opportunity to meet him. He's probably a fantastic guy. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd like to meet Arnold. I mean, he, I mean, he's super old now. It'd be like meeting a grandpa, muscly grandpa, but <laughs> still be cool. <laughs> it, it would. It would still be really cool. That's the worst image when you say that. <laughs> I know. 
something not right popped into my head as soon as I heard the words. Muscly grandpa? Yeah. <laughs> it is that. That is a, uh, that is a really Sorry. muscly grandpa right there. We call that a gilf. <laughs> 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 I learned that from Archer, by the way. I did not make that up. <laughs> yeah, that is from Archer. <laughs> no, <laughs> actually, a, a friend of mine, um, author uh, Mindy Arnett, and I think she's in Ohio or somewhere in there. She She's big into CrossFit and bodybuilding, and she went to Arnold Khan, which I didn't know was a thing. And yeah. it actually had pictures of meeting him there, and he, he he really does look like a grandpa. It's it's crazy. I mean, he's an old man now, but, uh, well, but yeah, yeah. That yeah. Happens, Jason. Jason, yeah, I, I know. <laughs> what, what's that? I know. Oh, no. <laughs> Ed, how old are you? Thirty-five. Forty-five. You're forty-five. Hmm? Okay, well, you are you are kind of an old man. But Kendra, are you forty-five? Forty-five too? No, I'm thirty-one. Okay, I was gonna say, holy shit, you ate yeah, really well. Over here, younger woman, yeah. Uh, well, and I'm I'm turning forty this this well, not this year, next year. So I'm I'm, I'm, get, I'm getting up there too. And then Jane is turning thirty five this year, right? Okay, thank you. Who is I? am fucking ancient compared to all you. <laughs> Uh, he's turning 21 again so yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm over the half a century mark <laughs> no way well, yeah. yes <laughs> well and what, what do you you told me your how you typically write is you write in the living room with the grandkids running around with a computer on your lap yeah in the chair yeah. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the TV's on. At least it's low. So <laughs> Kendra does it, but she's usually got cats running around. Yeah. How can you write with other people in the room? I can't do it at all. You should be able to, okay? Because you got I, I can. I can write in the middle of a hurricane. <laughs> I have the absolute worst ADD. I have to have like the right setting in order to be able to write. And even if somebody comes and like sits next to me. It instantly stops oh, me yeah. from writing. I can't have people looking over my shoulder. Can't have people ask me questions. I have to have my silence, or well, my white noise silence. Well, if if, if I if I put the the headphones in, I can sometimes write in the same room as as Heather, but it's tough because like when you're in the same room as someone, they want to talk to you, even when you have the headphones in, mm -hmm. even when you're writing, and it's obvious that you're writing and that you have headphones in and that you're writing, they still talk to you. Yes, why do they do that? Uh, I don't know. I can I can write anywhere and it's so funny. My my kids used to say, you know, Mom, I've been calling your name for five minutes and they're like standing right here. <laughs> and it's just like no headphones, nothing. I'm just in the story and I'm like, what? <laughs> I, I find it. I literally get five minutes, no more, usually less, between interruptions with kids. Mm -hmm. it's, I've timed it to where it's like my husband can be sitting in between me and where the kids are. They will bypass him and come to me to bug me about snacks or drinks or something's wrong or they're fighting over something or they need something on TV change or whatever bullshit reason that they need something. <laughs> they will bypass my husband, come to me within five minutes every single time. And it's consistent. Five minute, five minute, five minute, five minute, five minutes. So I can't do anything when when they're awake which is why most of my writing happens late at night into the early morning mm -hmm. well, and that goes right back to what i've what i've always said is that the kids are terrible they're just, <laughs> kids are terrible <laughs> guys out there if you're thinking about having kids you should really look into adopting a puppy because puppies they're always going to make you happy and <laughs> I love my uh, babies, but man, they like seriously every five minutes. Mm -hmm. And I look over, I'm like, you have a father. He's right there. Nope. Gotta go to mom. Said, see what your mama says. <laughs> <laughs> it's conditioned, uh, I think. <laughs> well, Katie, dad, I yes, thank you. <laughs> Katie, I had something intelligent to say, and now I've lost it. Oh, damn it. <laughs> Hell, man. 
Damn it. This is like a, a once a week thing, too. Oh, the epiphany is gone. Oh, man. We need sound effects. We need that womp womp. Oh, yeah. That, that's a good one. I like that. I could, I could have that on my phone and just pop it up every once in a while. <laughs> okay. I, I, I got another escape room text. We got to see. Really need to join <laughs> oh, wait, wait. I think that's from my boss. Yeah, yeah, my boss and her husband want me to join an escape room. I Do thought it. you said your boss, you were talking about your it's wife. Fun. No, well, yeah, she's my boss too. She's out of town. But no, they, they said now. I'm like, but no, <laughs> it's it's 8.50. I'm not going to do an escape room. But you know what I would like to do? I'd like to go see Captain Marvel tonight. That's oh, what I would really like to do. To you yeah. have to tell me if you see it. I want all the spoilers because I won't get to see it for a while. No, I'm not going to give you spoilers because I'm not a terrible person. No, no, I like spoilers. I don't care what you like. I'm not a terrible person. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, there's two camps of people. There's people who don't want spoilers, and there's people who like spoilers because then they are excited to see how they pull it off. And I'm that that side. I, I want to know what happens, and then I can I see how they pull it off. Spoilers. I don't understand it, Katie. I don't get you. Yeah, I. I don't. I. I. I, I are you pranking us or? <laughs> no, I, I like spoilers. I. In fact, I. I will admit I have already watched all of the Captain Marvel reviews that have spoilers in them. <laughs> I'm not going to wow. see the movie for who knows when because I don't have a sitter that I can pull in. And I'm not taking my kids to go see it. You have or a husband. Young, you appreciate that. <laughs> and it cost a million dollars to go to the movies anyway. So if I'm going to pay that eight, money, I'm going to enjoy like the eight dollars in the movie theaters five minutes away. <laughs> movie tickets have gone way up. I'll bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, the tickets aren't the bad thing. It's the popcorn and the drinks and all that. That's what yeah. But that's yeah. how they how the movie theater yeah, actually the makes all the money. Just bring a big pocketbook with popcorn and soda <laughs> in it. They make <laughs> you open a pocketbook now. They do. They do. Yeah, go to a different one. The ones around here for us. That's my here. son if they do it here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, nothing. Okay, you're good. <laughs> well, you know, my my son has that same infu inhuman affliction that you do, Katie, where he where he loves spoilers <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> It, and I never said it was normal. It's it's so bad that we we won't we won't invite him to family movie night in the living room or to go to the theater with us. Um, we we won't do it because he will literally sit there and the whole time try to tell us what's about to happen. I'm like, oh, what no. is wrong with you? You, how did you get this way? <laughs> Okay. You were raised right. <laughs> there, there's the line right there. I like to know spoilers, but I won't spoil it for somebody else who doesn't like spoilers. I won't do that. That's that's just wrong. Yeah, I mean, I I like watching those, watching the you know the honest trailers and stuff like that after I've seen the movie because then they're funny. <laughs> those are good. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so I'd like to do that. There's actually a, a showing at nine thirty here, which is. For me, that's in 40 minutes. But um, so, yeah, I might go do that. The theater should be nice and empty, which means no humans I, I would have to interact with, which would be it's great. It's a Saturday night. It's a release night. Yes. It's a Saturday night of release weekend. Yes. That theater is not going to be empty, Jason. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Even this weekend is not going to be empty for that movie. <laughs> no, because even when we went to go yeah. see the and, the and the clocks go forward today, by the way. <sighs> we lose an hour. Does that mean it's really 10 right now? No, no. It, it, it's, 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 it's 2 o'clock in the morning, apparently. Uh, Can we just abolish this whole daylight savings time thing? Yeah, it's crap. I agree. Oh my God. Yeah. Almost don't really need it anymore. We don't, and Arizona doesn't have it, and they're state next door, so half the year they're on our time and half the year they're not. It's so confusing. Well, um, and, and <laughs> reality, what I read the other day when they had this thing on the news, I was like, oh, yeah, go check this out. It's actual history for it. I went and I looked it up. Farmers didn't want it to start with. So, I mean, saying it's for the farmers is a complete lie. So I just lied to everybody. I just want it to be light out at night until about 8 o'clock at night. That's all I want. <laughs> I don't care what time it gets light in the morning. But at night, I want the <laughs> the late. I need the morning light. I'm, I'm ready for the summer hours where it's daylight when I wake up in the morning and daylight when I go to bed. 
Yeah. Yes. I have blackout curtains. I don't need to worry about that morning light. <laughs> yeah, same here. So, I mean, our room's pitch black. See, I get up to go to my day job in the morning, so having the light in the morning is nice, so I'm not confused. <laughs> mm -hmm. What do you think for? How what? long? No, it's not the confused? route. It's not the, <laughs> no, that's not it. It's it's dark outside. I think it's still time to be asleep. I was working, when I was working in the factories, it was dark when I went in and dark when I got out because I worked 12, 14, 16, mm -hmm. 20 hour shifts sometimes. So, I mean, yeah, I, I didn't ever see daylight. And then I worked night shift too. So, Ed, why are you always trying to steal Kendra's thunder? I, d I don't understand. Yeah, I should have shown him. What, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Kendra, what do you do for your day job? Are you a psychologist or something? Um, no, actually, my degree I am not using except to write. Um, I am actually a bankruptcy analyst, so I work for an auto loan company working all of their accounts for people that have filed bankruptcy. Okay. Yeah, it's very interesting. Okay. All right. That sounds very technical, very detail-oriented. It, it is. <laughs> that would not be the job for me. Hello, it's kitty time. <laughs> Like, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> you came calmly asleep. I know. <laughs> you walked into the wrong room, cat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what were we talking about, Katie? Day jobs. <laughs> Day jobs that we would like to not have. Uh, see, I remember when I was doing contracts for the uh, the plumbing contractor out here. I hated the morning ride when it was daylight savings time because the sun was coming up as I was heading to work and I was driving west or sorry, east. Um, and so I would be driving into the sunrise every morning and I hated it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I used to hate that too. Mm -hmm. Do you know the only reason I know where the sun, you know, rises and sets is because of that red hot chili pepper song? I can never remember. Then I'm like, at least it settles in a fine location. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. He lives in Cali. That's that must be the West. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yep. That and geography. Oh, the Souders. Yes, you guys should. You guys sing. No, I can't sing. <laughs> oh, come on, guys. Years upon years upon years, of course, and some vocal training, but no, no. This isn't the, this isn't the Osmonds no, over no. here. Come on. Oh, sing it or horror do I only do car karaoke now. That's it. I do bad car karaoke. So we're down for that. <laughs> we need to have a, a karaoke episode, Katie. Oh god. Oh, no. I don't that, sing. That, that could happen on the uh, office. I will scare people away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Myself in the car. What viewers? No, no, not for me. We want viewers. We don't want to terrify them. <laughs> They'll love it. They'll enjoy it. What, Joe? Come on, chime chime in on this, Joe. What do you think? A karaoke episode? We'll get the souders back. It'll be an extension of our drinks with authors. It'll be drinks and karaoke with authors. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? We can try and get on. Well, I think we need. We'll, we'll need to have something stronger than drinks. It'll have to be like ketamine and karaoke or something. <laughs> so we really won't remember what the hell has happened. Oh my god! <laughs> my college days. <laughs> hey guys, going into the K-hole. <laughs> uh, that's right, Derek. I can't. Yeah, see the wrong key. That's the key. That's the key. Yeah, yeah. Everyone can sing. Not everyone should sing. Right. <laughs> my, my only problem is that I'm always either flat or sharp. You know, that's that's all. Gotta find that balance, Jason. <laughs> Uh, know my no. limits. I won't do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's I'm that's our words, silently. <laughs> <laughs> you know, know your limits. That's our <laughs> anti-gambling slogan here. My audio is messed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Katie, I am getting a new microphone soon. Another one? Well, yes. I'm. I think I'm. I'm gonna sell this one. 
and uh, replace it with something else. Um, it's it drives me. I mean, it it sounds nice, but it picks up so much that when I'm doing audiobooks, I end up getting all sorts of little little mouth noise <laughs> that you can't hear normally, but it's there in the microphone. And oh my god, editing that crap out it's it's not cool. It's a pain. Um, so I'm I'm going with a with a traditional uh, broadcast mic that's a, a dynamic mic instead of a condenser. Um, so hopefully that'll be a little easier and cleaner. Cool. Well, yeah. I will have my script ready for you to try it out on. Yeah, yeah. Are you making any progress on that? I think I'm uh, about halfway through now, and okay. it's taking a lot longer to convert to script-ish format. It's not even true script format. Okay. But yeah, because I've had to move everything around to make the the dialogue actually stand out a little bit more from the narration. Okay. So yeah, about halfway through. Give me another few weeks, and I'll have it all done. Yay. Exciting. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah, well, it's a long time. Yeah, we got you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm also writing too, so I'm having to divide my time. So it's like, okay, I'll do one chapter of the, the script <laughs> conversion, and then I'll go and try and write one chapter for the next book. And you know, I wake up drooling on my keyboard in the morning and I haven't made it through half of it. So yeah. <laughs> it sounds about right. <laughs> mm. Well, this has been a pretty productive show, guys. I, I think it's like, been fun. You guys I, feel, I feel like we've covered some hard topics today. <laughs> I know. Yeah. <laughs> Jason, get so, all Kate, serious for a moment. Katie, do you, or not Katie, oh, Kendra, do you remember that you and I were actually the very first guests on Spilling Ink? Yes, it was we one. We were. Yeah, that was a long time ago. <laughs> well, Crazy. It was a long time ago. What's that? Almost three years ago. Holy cow. Oh my God, it doesn't feel like it's been that long. Yep. It's only Crazy. Three in, I think, September. Wow. wow. Where has the time gone? I wish that we, we saw more of David. It'd be nice to have him on here now and again. I miss I miss his smiling little face. He had a cute little elf face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Well, we're at our, our time for the day, guys. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about before we sign off? Everybody's just sitting there silently. Kendra's <laughs> looking away as if she doesn't want the attention put back on her. Is, is that what you were doing, Kendra? Maybe a little bit. You don't want any more attention? <laughs> now, we're bringing you guys back on with Mr. Brian Tan, I believe, on the 30th of the month. So we should have another lively chat. Yes. That'll be a, a, a much louder chat, too, I'm sure. Oh, Brian's fun. great. I love him to death. He's like the brother from another family that I adopted. He <laughs> and I get along so well, it's not funny. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's a cool guy. I like Brian yes. a lot. Out of the blue and say, what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> oh, he's my, my special little cuddly bri bri. I love that guy. Yeah, he's, he's, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right, well, Katie, you want to roll us out tonight? All right. Well, thank you to everyone out there who is watching us tonight. Feel free to like and share. Subscribe on our YouTube channel. Um, we will have the link for that posted probably within about an hour of this show um, being done. And we will be back, as always, next week on Saturday with some more wonderful people to introduce you to and some more lively conversation that Jason will derail. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't me tonight. It was Jane. It's still on the tracks. It's just on a different track now. It went on a tangency. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and Kendra and Ed, thank you guys as well for hanging with us. And we'll see you guys again on the 30th. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for having Bye, me. The, the, back, the back of the bio, I can't even pronounce it now. The, the last time that I screwed up by calling Jinxie the wrong name all night. I apologize, Jinxie. <laughs> no, we weren't blockading you. You were always welcome back. We love hanging with you. Oh, I appreciate that. Thanks for blowing up my ego, Katie. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> All right, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye.